G'day guys, welcome back to another video. This one is going to be on the 80 series. So, I don't know if you can notice, but there is something different since the last video you would have seen on this car, and that is this guard. So, we actually swapped the old um, guard that had the plastic snorkel in it with one of our mates from Bendigo. He wanted the plastic snorkel, and then we got his clean guard. We weren't sure if we are going to just keep the clean guard or go a stainless snorkel. And um, obviously this is Peyton's car, and she's decided to go with the Stano. So, if you look down here, Got some very well packaged stuff here from King Fab Customs. They booked us up again, um, like on the patrol, that's what I run on the patrol. And um, they've sent us out a snorkel for this. Now we've decided to go full polished one. Um, we'll put it on the car, see how it looks. And then if we decide to powder coat it, we can do that later. We didn't want to get a powder coated black or green and then decide that the polish would have looked better. Because um, obviously you can't go back to the polish once you paint it. So, I'll get this opened up um, and then we'll get the template and stuff to start sort of mapping it out on the car and get ready to cut into this fresh guard. Alright, so you can see everything's um, unwrapped now and laid out. So you've got the snorkel itself, and then you've got the pinch weld um, to cover the cut that you'll be doing. A few hose clamps, two of the silicon joiners, you've got the reducer that I assume goes from the 4 inch down to the 3 inch. Cool little lobster join, which I assume helps it plumb up to the uh, air box. And then they've even hooked us up with a t shirt and some stickers. So might chuck this straight on, I reckon. Oh, g'day guys! <laughs> now, I've just got out the template and then here's the instructions so you can pause them if you want to read it. But basically, I'll pop the bonnet, um, pull the air box out, tape up this area of the guard and then I'll get some sharp scissors, cut out this, cut the whole template out so I can map this onto the guard, tape it on and then I can get a nice marker, mark that template there and then I'll get my sharp tin snips to um, cut this out. I used to use like a jigsaw in the past but um, a nice sharp set of tin snips definitely works better. So I'll get that out. Alright so I've just undone the little screw up here off the throttle body, undid the clip here, undo your map sensor and stuff, this should come off and then it's just the three 12 mil bolts that hold the um, air box down into the guard so I've undone them and now it should just lift out. Uh, so I'm just basically taping the rough area where the cut will be. So I'll cover it good with the tape and then I can sit the template that we've cut out up here and then we'll be able to mark on here rather than mark on the paint because you won't see it very well on the paint. You can see we've got this taped on now. Um, so all I'll do is I'll push this down while I mark it super neat and then I'll get the tin snips out. I'll probably drill like a 10 mil hole or something first just so I can then come back with the tin snips through that hole. Alright, nine times out of ten, the um, template they give you is that little bit too tight. You always have to come back and trim extra. So I'm just cutting on the outside of the line and then I'll do the first test fit and then I assume I'll have to cut a little bit more out later on. But um, that's why with your first cut, you don't have to be like 100% precise because you're always going to have to do a little bit of final trimming. So we've done the first cut, I've got it in um, and now I just want to make sure there's a good 5 to 10 mil gap around the whole thing because that pinch weld is quite thick as well as it's got a bit of width to the pinch weld so you've always got a bit of playroom to sort of move it up and down to fill the gaps um, so you don't 
don't want it super tight where you can't even get the damp. So what I've done is you can see under here, um, it's just that bit tight there. So I've just scribed it with a permanent marker and now I'll come back and take the rest of that material away. And then the other thing is it's not quite rolled in enough yet. And it's because, because we're running this sun visor, if you come around the back here, you can see it's actually hitting on this nut on the visor, which is fine because these do not need to be that big. So I'll pull this off and use a thinner head and then that way I'll be able to get this bracket inside the pillar. Okay, so unfortunately I just did that bit of trimming and it still does hit on the thread here. So what I've done is I've undone the nut and then I've just tested it and it still is super strong because you've still got a bracket here and then on the other side still double fixed. So I'll be able to cut this off and shouldn't have any issues. But just if you do have a sun visor, you'll probably have the same issue. Uh, you can see it's pretty tight clearance, but now I can basically sit this where I want on the pillar. Got plenty of room to screw or um, put some nut certs in, and it's still got about 5 10 mil clearance against the bracket here and the threads here. Alright, so now that I'm happy with my cut, I've just got the pin fold out, and I'm just going to cut this to size now. Now I'll just double check that the snorkel fits while the pinch weld's in and hopefully it does first go. Um, and then also I did notice with the things they've provided just rivets anyway, so we'll probably just use these because um, they're super easy to do. And a nut set gun would have needed a bigger hole and stuff, which can be a pain in the ass. All right, now that we're happy with our cut, pulled all the tape off. I've given this a nice sand so it's all smooth. And now I've just got some um, black paint here that's rust preventative and I can just go along with the paintbrush and just neatly make sure I cut, cover that hole on all the fresh cut laid on thick might do a couple coats of this and I can put the pinch weld back on and it should be sweet now that we've got this snorkel hole all good got the pinch weld back on I can chuck this back in and then I'll finally drill these holes into the pillar and then once I've got it fully mounted up, I'll start working on the intake side of things. Um, they've obviously given us some of the silicon joints and stuff, but they need to be trimmed to suit the airbox, so I'll have to play around with that a bit. So from the inside here, you can see where the snorkel's finishing here, right near this um, intake sort of hole. Now they say to measure back 30 mil and then cut this out here but i might try first without doing that so i've basically got to get this in on that then do up the hose clamp which will be the awkward part trying to get a hose clamp done up in that tight space because it's probably only about five mil clearance there and on the other side but if i can do it without cutting it that'll be better but if not that's fine and then from there this will return in and cut down to go straight onto the airbox. i very quickly realized that i wouldn't actually be able to even get to the um, hose clamps so I did the cut I went about 50 mil just to give myself plenty and then they provide enough of the pinch weld to actually cover that hole now so it stays super neat and now I have plenty of access to do them up so I'll put the snorkel back in tighten everything up and give you a look okay so now I'm going to mark these three holes when I'm happy with where it's positioned now I'll mark them with the texture and then I've just got a four and a half mil drill bit. I think should be the right size for these. And then I'll put these three in and it should be nice and solid. And then we can plumb it up to the airbox. So I was able to get this part of the plumb plumbing done. So you can see the reducers on there nice and tight. And then the 90 is coming out here. So what I'm gonna do is put the airbox back in um, just roughly where the bolt holes are and then measure from sort of back here to the um, end of the pipe on this. And then that way I can cut down this silicon joiner to that measurement. It's gonna be quite awkward just because you can see the angles are actually off. It doesn't come in um, parallel. So I'll just take the long point measurement from there to there um, and then cut this bit on the angle and just probably have to put like a bit of a kink in this to fold it around, sort of like that. Um, hopefully I can get it to work. 
All right, that worked very well. All I did was do the cut on the angle and sort of just did up these clamps first and then shoved the air box in and just maneuvered it around until it was lining up with the holes down there. And now she's all plumbed up. So now we can close the bonnet and have the first proper look at how it looks. Looks very nice. So now I guess we'll have to turn it on, make sure everything's plumbed up all right, there's no leaks anywhere. And then I'll do a little sound test too, because it's a petrol NA, they normally have a, um, a funny like induction sound because there's obviously no turbo, no flutter. But because it's still got the stock airbox with the um, resignator in it, it should be quiet enough to not be annoying. Alrighty guys, don't know if you would have heard much in that last clip, the induction sound is very quiet, which is exactly what we wanted. Um, but if you give it a little rev, you do hear a little bit of it, which is nice. So that's pretty much going to wrap up the video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Um, shout out to King Fab Customs once again. Like I said, they've hooked us up with the 80 and the Patrol now, and their stuff is just unreal. They do the snorkels and the air boxes for pretty much any of the sort of most common cars out there these days. And the price is super affordable. I'm pretty sure most of their snorkels are between the $700 and $800 mark. Um, and like, like you would have seen in this video, very easy to install. Uh, all the templates are very good quality and accurate. So very happy with this. Um, so yeah, if you've got any questions or anything, chuck a comment down below. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.